I get asked quite a lot about multiple field entry and uh, specifically in terms of validation. So I thought I'd share with you a technique I've recently been using, but without using JavaScript whatsoever. Sometimes you don't really want the hassle of having to do this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show you how to potentially share something with multiple emails. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to have five inputs on this page. We're going to be able to only allow one of them to be required. So only one email address that we enter has to be required. All of them have to be unique. So we can't enter the same email uh, more than once. And once we've submitted this, we can go through and obviously send an email potentially. We're not gonna be covering that, but you can go ahead and handle that afterwards. And this could really apply to anything. It's not the most elegant way of outputting a list of inputs, but it does the job. And depending on what you're doing, this could work for you. So what I've done is just very simply set up a controller here with an index, which is rendering this share view just here. So we don't have anything in here at the moment. And of course I have a store method on this controller as well. And I just have two really simple routes set up. So everything's already set up, ready to go. Uh, but this is pretty straightforward. Okay. So over in our view, let's start to look at how we might output these fields. Now there are a ton of ways that you can do this. Uh, and let's just mock this out uh, really roughly and you can go ahead and tidy it up later on. So we'll leave the action for now. In here, we're working with Bootstrap, so we would have some kind of form group for each of our inputs. Uh, we may even have a label in here, you don't have to, uh, but let's go ahead and create a label anyway. So we're gonna say for email, and this is going to, inside of here, just say something like email, and why don't we make this a bit unique? So when we do iterate through here and output five, uh, let's say email one, and we'll replace this out in just a minute. So into here, we'd have an input type of text. Let's just give this a bootstrap class, so form control, and we'll give this the name of email, and this is going to be an array. So we could call this emails, we could call it email. I think emails is a little bit better here. So the point here is that for however many of these we generate, we're gonna have an array with all of them email addresses in. Now in terms of the actual ID, we'd need to make this unique as well, of course. Uh, and in this case, let's just really roughly do this. So I'm gonna say for each range one to five as X maybe. And then down here, let's go ahead and end that for each. Now, if you had a predefined uh, set of inputs, so you could technically just duplicate these down however many times you want, that's absolutely fine. You could use a for loop, really depends on what you wanna do. In this case, we're just gonna make this super rough. So in this case, we'd have email one. And then for the ID, this of course would be email and then maybe we could include a hyphen in here and then output x because of course an id per page needs to be unique so let's also update this of course for the label as well so we can actually click through properly and let's just give this a little preview and see what we have so there we go we have five potential fields that we can fill so let's create a very quick submit button down here so let's create another form group create an input type of submit or a button type of submit, that'd be better. And we'll just say send, something like that, or share, whatever you wanted to do. And why don't we give this a nice class as well of button, button default. Okay, so the problem that we have is, this needs to be required, but these don't. So we can fill out email two to five if we want, uh, but only the first one is actually required. So we can't just send it through. Uh, it just will not work if we don't have any emails whatsoever. And we wanna handle this nice and elegantly with Laravel's validation. Now, the other problem is that all of these need to be unique and also all of them need to be an email address. Now, if for example, we don't fill out email two to five, an empty string is not an email address. So we need to handle this in some way as well. Okay, so now that we have this rough setup that you can of course go ahead and play around with, uh, we're gonna go ahead and send this through to this. So I'm just gonna give this a name very quickly and we're just gonna sh say share.store. And of course you can uh, name this however you want. So over in our index here, let's go and just output this. So we'll generate a root through to that and we should be able to submit this, of course, not forgetting to bring in our cross-site request forgery field. All right, so now that we can actually potentially submit this, let's go ahead and send it through. Of course, we see nothing, so we're not doing anything inside of that store method, but let's go ahead and validate this. We're gonna extract this out to a form request in a moment, just because it's a little bit tidier, uh, particularly when we're looking at custom validation rules, but we'll do it here just to make sure it works, and then if you want to, you can extract this out. So we're gonna go ahead and validate, passing through our request object, and inside of here, 
how on earth are we going to set these rules up? Well, to kind of work this out, let's do a die dump on request emails and actually see what we get. So let's output these. Let's go back and resubmit this form, send this through. And you can see we just get a null for zero to four. Of course, it's up to four because we have a zero indexed array. So if I do go ahead and submit something, so let's enter an email address in there and that's auto filled. That's pretty annoying. Let's get rid of each of them send this through and of course we see the following so what we need to do is set up a rule to say something like emails and what we can do is use an asterisk here to say that each of these has to satisfy these rules so for example if we were to say required that wouldn't quite work what we can do though is say that each of these has to be an email so let's get rid of our die dump let's go back and submit this through of course we're redirected back because all of these are required. Now, in order to really demonstrate this, we kind of need to set up our uh, validation output. Uh, so what I'm gonna do in here is just very quickly do this. And the way that we do this, uh, basically using an array and this kind of for each notation is we just say errors has, and then we would say emails dot, and then we would simply append on uh, what we're currently iterating through like so. And in this case, because we are working with an array, this would need to be zero to four, but you can kind of figure out a better way to uh, go ahead and loop through these, or of course, just manually create them. Okay, so now that we've done that, just underneath our form here, let's go ahead and say if our errors has email, and then of course we still need to use our dot notation to append on that X, go ahead and end the if there, and then in here we would have a span with a help block class, and then in here, we would just output the first error for that particular key. So errors first, and then inside of here, email dot, and then of course, as always, append on that X. So now if we go ahead and send this through, so let's just fix this up to say emails, we've called it emails, make sure that's okay. And let's send this through. And let's also just make sure we're actually outputting the has error class that we need otherwise nothing and in terms of the label we also need to give this a class which is i believe control label or label control we'll see in a minute send this through and there we go so we get a validation uh, error for each one now of course the actual validation error itself is a little bit odd at the moment uh, so we'll go ahead and fix that up when we look at our form request okay so really back to the kind of point of this we can't really say that each of the emails is required we can say that each of the emails has to be an email address, that makes sense, but we still run into the problem where an empty value or a null value must be a valid email address, which of course it isn't. So what we can actually do here is say, well, I'm gonna allow all of these to be nullable. Now that might not make any sense, but just bear with me. So if we go ahead and send this, it works as normal. Now what we want to do in terms of allowing maybe the first email, this first email has to be filled we can very simply down here say emails zero and we can almost overwrite these rules. So in this case, we can say, well, the first email is required like so. So this kind of makes sense. And if we go ahead and give this a send now, you can see the email zero fill is required. If I fill this in and this is really annoying, let's just get rid of all of these again, send this through and it works. So we are allowing for the first email address but the others are nullable. So if we go ahead and fill this in again, and for example, I do actually send a duplicate email, this is a problem. We don't want to iterate through that array of emails that we get, and of course, send it to multiple people. We can do that filtering at the controller level, but honestly, it's gonna get a little bit messy and it's a lot better to handle this, of course, at the validation level. So in this case, what we want to do is just say, distinct and what that will do is allow us to have all of our emails distinct so really really important so essentially nullable is still applied to this one but because this is required uh, it's kind of ignored nullable okay so let's go ahead and just send this through again so let's include a duplicate email address so let's get rid of all of these send this across and there we go so the emails one field has a duplicate value uh, now of course you've noticed that all of the uh, inputs have been cleared uh, to get around this you would obviously just say value and then in here you could say old and then emails and then of course a dot notation appending on that key so let's go ahead and send this through again why don't we send them all through 
And there we go. So the emails one field has a duplicate value and so on and so forth. So even if we were to make this different, but don't include a valid email address, we see must be a valid email address. Now, if we submit this with a rubbish email address in the first one, if we send this through, notice we don't see that validation error. So what we would additionally have to do within our validation is also say that this needs to be an email. A little bit odd, but that's just how it's gonna work. Send this through and we get that in there. So you can play around with this depending on what you're doing, but that is pretty much the validation as we need. Okay, so now that we have done this, what about customizing our messages? Of course, at the moment, this does look a little bit rubbish with uh, the emails one field has a duplicate value. We kind of want to make this a little bit more generic. So uh, the way that I would usually do this and the way that you can do this is just pass an additional array in here and then define out things like email and then whatever. So emails dot required. Uh, and in this case, you would have to use your asterisks for each one. So you could say in here, uh, email is required or make it a little bit more friendly. I guess we need an email address that's not more friendly, but a little bit different. So in this case, then if I were to submit this, we need an email address. But doing this at the controller level, plus any logic down here, which would probably be through uh, mapping through your array that you get and then going ahead and sending, I don't really like this. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make a form request and I'm gonna extract my validation rule out to a form request. We can implement all of our custom uh, error messages and it will be a little bit cleaner. So in this case, I might say something like share whatever request in this case i'm just going to say share form request because it's pretty generic uh, with this example that's going to go ahead and create my requests folder create this in here we can go ahead and pull this in and replace out our normal request so in this case i'd use app http requests and use that in there and very simply replace that in and we can start to move all of our validation rules over so in this case, let's uh, set authorized to true. We don't need to really handle this here. We do that at maybe a middleware level or uh, whatever else. Paste our rules in here. Uh, and if we take a look at the base form request, what we can do is use the messages method here, which returns an array, which grabs all of our custom validation messages. So very simply over on our share form request, we just need to implement this method, overwriting the default, and we can start to define all of our messages out in here. Now, what we can do at this point is literally get rid of all of this and we're done. So just to kind of demonstrate this, let's do a die dump on request emails just to see that we get them values through. Okay, so now that we've done this, let's just go over. Let's enter an email address in here. Let's get rid of all of these. I really should turn autocomplete off in this case and send this through. So we get the email address here. We know that our validation is working and we need to handle these at some point as well. And we'll do that in just a moment. Okay, so for the validation messages then, let's go ahead and implement these so uh, we make it nice and friendly. Okay, so for required, in this case, we would say emails dot asterisk, and then we would say required. And again, we just set this to something like we need an email address. And then for, for example, nullable, we don't really need to worry about this because this is a more kind of, a, away from the scenes uh, validation where we are allowing it to be nullable but we do really need to implement something like distinct so we could say something like duplicate email found and then for our email so emails dot email validation rule we could say that is not a valid email address like so so now you can kind of fiddle around with these and do what you want but now we have a much nicer way of doing things. If we go ahead and enter an email address here and we see a duplicate, duplicate email found. If of course it's not a valid email, either here or in any of the other fields, we see that is not a valid email address and that is pretty much it. So again, you can play around with these and pretty much do what you want. All right, so once we do get past this point, we've covered validation, how do we go ahead and filter out the nulls? What we don't want to do is map through uh, all of these if they don't exist. So in this case, for example, entering the following, we would only expect to see two email addresses or at least send two emails. So in this case, if we just send this through, we see the two. 
Now in the controller, you would go ahead and map through these. So the best way I found to do this is to go ahead and collect them up into a new Laravel collection. So for example, request emails. What we can then do is either map through them or go each through them. And this is a little bit of a better method. So we could say each. For each of them, we get an email and we could go ahead and do something with it. So why don't we just var dump that email just to see it's there uh, and then just kill the page down here if we're doing something else. So give that a refresh and we see the following but we still have these null values. Now you could do this with the Laravel collection, but to be honest, it's a lot easier just to use a plain vanilla PHP function like array filter to filter them before they're put in the collection. And then when you go ahead and map through them, you will end up with just the emails that you want to send to. So that is pretty much it. Uh, of course, you can customize this to do pretty much whatever you want. You could probably tidy up the view a little bit, just here instead of mapping through like this entirely up to you but hopefully that was helpful i get asked about this a lot and if you don't want to use javascript then this is the next best solution